Good morning, everyone. Today, I'm going to show sentiment analysis with Spark based on examples of our customers' applications. And I'm going to demo how you can use Apache Spark to unify different sources of data as well as, as, well as different workloads in a single application. In my demo, I'm going to uh, ingest data from three different data sources. I will read data from HDFS, which is a distributed storage uh, system, and Redshift, which is a data warehouse service offered by Amazon. I will ETL data from these two sources using Spark SQL and construct a training data set, which I will then pass to Spark's machine learning library to build a classifier. I give the classifier to a Spark streaming application to score live stream of tweets, which is the third source of data in my demo. Um, OK, so let's get started. So I open the, the Databricks uh, workspace. And this is where uh, we run all our Spark applications. I have asked our data engineering team to dump uh, tweets for the past few days. And they have been doing so and storing them on an HDFS cluster in JSON. So as a first step, I am going to uh, read and explore the data. So for that, I'm creating a notebook. And I choose R uh, to explore my data, uh, primarily because it is the latest addition to Spark and Databricks notebooks. But you can do this exploratory analysis in Scala and Python as well. So let me zoom in, zoom in a little bit to make sure everyone in the back can see, <coughs> can see my code. <coughs> Excuse me. So as a first step, I'm going to uh, read the data from HDFS. And use Spark's JSON data source to parse them. This is very convenient because it, it relieves me from having to write a custom JSON parser uh, to read my data. S Spark's JSON data source will scan every record and construct the best schema that accommodates all of them, including data types and nested fields. Now that I get a data frame, I can register it at the temp table. Let's call it tweets. And since it's the table, I can use SQL to explore my data. I'm going to take a look at the first few rows of my data to get a sense of what it looks like. OK, so as you can see, we have several columns. And some of them are nested, like this user column. But in this demo, we are primarily concerned with text features. So I'm going to uh, extract that column. Before that, let me import a library called MacReader that will simplify my syntax and construct another da uh, data frame. using this pipe operator that is enabled by the library that basically consists of uh, the lowercase text field. And I'm adding two more columns. The first one, I'm calling it is happy. And it's a flag that is set when the text field contains uh, the happy smiley face. And a second column that is very similar. And I call it is sad, which is going to be set when we see the sad face. And since I'm going to be interacting with this data multiple times, I cache it. Now, I'm going to ask Spark to materialize the cache by counting the number of rows in my data. 
So now Spark will fetch the data from, from HDFS and construct the two new columns that I just created and keep it in the memory of the workers in my cluster and also return the number of rows. As you can see, we have about 70 million tweets. But I would like to know how many of them have either of those two uh, um, uh, smiley faces. So I perform a simple aggregation and count to get the numbers. And when I display it, I can see that I have about 6,700 tweets with a happy face and only about 500 tweets with a sad face. If I look at the ratio of these two with a simple pie chart, we can see that we have a little bit more than 10 times more tweets with the happy face than the sad, the sad ones. So this is interesting, but it is important for us because if you want to use these tweets to construct a training data set, we need to make sure uh, that we balance the number of positive and negative examples. That's why I'm going to filter the happy tweets and sample them by about by 10% and get all of the sad tweets with no sampling. Now I can um, merge these two data, data frames. and register them, the, the merged data frame as a temp table and call it tweet data. OK. Uh, now, I'm going to repeat this process for the second data set that I have access to to hopefully get uh, more examples. So I will clone this notebook. The second data set are product reviews stored in Amazon Redshift. So I call it reviews and attach my notebook to the cluster. Because I don't want to uh, reveal my passwords, I'm going to run a notebook that populates some uh, uh, environment variables with my passwords. And then I am going to use Spark's Redshift data source to read data from Redshift. Right after that, I will uh, I ca call cache on my data frame and ask Spark to count it so the cache gets materialized. The Redshift data source will connect to Redshift and fetch all the contents of this table called reviews. And since I've asked Spark to cache it, it will be stored in the memory of all the workers. So subsequent actions against that data set will be much, much faster, and there will be no need to access Redshift again. And this is fairly common when accessing exter external data sources. So you can see we have about 2.5 million product reviews. So I'm going to get a peek at the data to see what it looks like. And as you can see, we have an ID, the review text, timestamps, and ratings. Again, we are only interested in text features here. So I changed my old query to get the review column and then run the rest of my notebook and get the ratio. So here we see that there are 17% of reviews with the sad uh, smiley face in them. And this could be because when people are paying with money for something, they're more likely to use the sad face in their review. Um, so this means we got to change our sampling ratio to balance the data set. So I do that and register this as a new table called review data. OK, now that we have training samples uh, from both data, data, data sources, I can start building my classifier. So now I'll create a new notebook, call it sentiment analysis. And this time, I choose Scala, uh, primarily because the machine learning team at Databricks has already written a notebook in Scala for sentiment analysis, and I would like to reuse their work. So I connect my notebook to GitHub. to fetch uh, the revision history and uh, switch to the latest version of the, their notebook and GitHub and, uh, and retrieve it and then get the notebook. This notebook expects to get its input data in a data frame called data, so I just construct that. 
the first table, and I uh, merge it with the second table, and run it. So we get a new data frame. Now I can run all the commands in, no in this notebook. And while it's running, explain what it does. The notebook is pretty simple. It takes uh, the text column and tokenizes um, the words, and then counts the frequency of each word, and then uses those frequencies in a regression model to build a classifier that identifies the contribution of each word to positive and negative uh, uh, sentiment. So, uh, the process is done, and we have our model here. At this stage, we would usually perform uh, cross-validation to assess the performance of our, uh, of our model. But I'm going to do something uh, slightly more fun for the demo. I'm going to give my uh, model a few uh, example sentences and see what it predicts as a sentiment for those. The first obvious uh, sentence I would like to test is, uh, I hate that, and I expect it to have negative sentiment. So let's see if our model can get that right. So that's right. If I change that to the opposite, something like, I like it, I expect it to be positive. So it is positive. Um, I actually uh, would like to use this to uh, get uh, the opinion on other topics. For example, the US elections is going on. So I was curious about one of the candidates. So let's see what our model thinks about that. Ah, and uh, naturally, I wanted to try this one. And it's different. So our model seems to have its opinion about, <laughs> about elections. But let's get to what we wanted to use our model for, which was scoring live stream of tweets and uh, identify uh, social media sentiment about our brand, for example. So I'm going to run another notebook that defines a function which will start my Spark streaming application. When I, when I call that function, I pass it the model that I just built and a keyword that will be used against Twitter's API to fetch all the tweets that match a given hashtag. So for this demo, I'm going to use the word coffee. And this will start the, the streaming application, which gets the tweets and applies the models on all of them and then stores the resulting scores in a table which is uh, called score tweets. So now I can query this table in SQL. And here are some examples. So uh, there is a happy one. We need help with volunteers. And there's a sad one. Grab your coffee. We see you have there. You see you, see you there. So I would like to do some frequency counts to actually get like an aggregate uh, uh, aggregate estimation of the sentiment. So I run this uh, simple query. It basically counts the number of happy and sad examples for each time interval. And I convert it to a graph and configure it to show different lines for positive and negative sentiment. OK, so this is uh, the summary. But because I want to share it with everyone else at my company, I'm going to create a dashboard and call it sentiment dashboard. So our graph is now available in the dashboard. And because I want it to refresh, to, to refresh itself automatically, I configure the dashboard to refresh every three seconds. So this will become a live dashboard. And here we are. We have a live dashboard of tweets that mention the keyword coffee. And we can see whether, at any time, the sentiment about it is positive or negative. And that shows how we could ingest data from different data sources, use them in multiple components of Spark, and then uh, build a, a, an application which 
gives us the answer to the questions we were looking for. Thank you.